I'm Jeffrey Dow, I'm the CEO of 60 Degrees Pharmaceuticals, and we like to call the company 60P. Is tofenaquin neurotoxic or not? Is this drug safe? It is not neurotoxic and it is safe. Do you believe your fellow Australians, particularly in the Australian Defence Force, are suffering as a result of tofenaquin? All the data we have suggests that tofenaquin does not increase the risk of neuropsychiatric events. I don't know or can't speak to individual circumstances or why people uh, have had the experiences they've had, but I personally don't think it relates to tofenaquin. Tofenaquin appears to be the only commonality between all of these troops who are suffering side effects. So you're missing, of course, their combat experience, which is known to be a major risk factor for traumatic stress disorder and neuropsychiatric events in general. They will allege that they were on humanitarian missions and didn't see combat. The Australian government classifies the Timor uh, missions as being warlike in nature. What do you tell me, as somebody who's received literally hundreds of emails from different members of the Australian military who say Tofenaquin shattered their life? So again, to, to repeat, um, in the clinical data that we have, which comes from the, the, the trials that many of the Australian soldiers volunteered in, there's no evidence of any increase in neuropsychiatric events associated with taking tofenaquin in the setting that they were in. You know, and you're saying combat includes a humanitarian mission in Papua well, New just, Guinea. Just to be clear, I, I'm not saying that. It's well documented in the literature that uh, deployment specifically and then combat even more than that is a major risk factor for mental health disorders. You use the term volunteered and I'm sure you're well aware they would argue they did not volunteer. In fact, several have used the term guinea pigs with me. What do you say to them? So there were two clinical trials that involved Australian service members uh, in Timor and Bougainville and there has been a report by the Australian government specifically the Inspector General of the ADF that looked into the allegations that some not all service members have made with respect to the conduct of those studies and it's pretty clear from that report that all of the soldiers received informed consent and there was no evidence of coercion and we can direct you to that report um, following this interview if you would like. I'd appreciate that for my files, thank you. Would you, Dr. Dow, be willing to take Tofenaquin for seven months as these service members did? And the simple answer to that is yes. Without hesitation? Without hesitation. How do you then answer to the critics who have already dubbed this Mefloquine 2.0 and say that we as a country need to learn from the mistakes of the past. Is that an unfair rap? I think that's an unfair statement that's uh, certainly not based on the data that I've reviewed and uh, 60P has submitted to the FDA for review. Let's talk about efficacy. I've interviewed a couple of Australian service members who took Tofenaquin during the trials and contracted malaria. So um, all our data show that the um, efficacy of tofenaquin is comparable to the comparative study drugs that we used in all the clinical trials. Why do you feel so strongly that tofenaquin should be fast-tracked by the FDA? So tofenaquin, based on data from 25 clinical trials and more than 3,000 patient exposures seems to have several benefits that the other drugs on the market don't have. The first is it works against Plasmodium vivax, so the liver stages of the disease for which the other drugs don't work. And the second major advantage is that it can be administered weekly as opposed to daily. And uh, for some people, not all people, that means compliance with a regimen is, is more straightforward. Mm -hmm. And we know that um, compliance is a 
major risk factor in contracting malaria when you return from travel. And what does 60P stand to gain through this priority review voucher? So, um, as you know, the priority review voucher is a regulatory incentive that Congress created to um, allow small companies to raise the resources and support that's needed to develop a drug through clinical trials. And as you know, a clinical development program is quite expensive. Um, you're also aware that there are two companies that have submitted dossiers for Tefeniclin, and only one company gets the PRV. So assuming that the PRV is awarded, um, it will provide the resources that we need to um, both reward our investors who've supported us along the way and to do any post-marketing studies that the FDA may, may require. I think something that gets missed in the dialogue online is that malaria is a serious disease. It is a life-threatening disease and a medical emergency if you get it. We think Tefaniquin will make a really valuable contribution to eradicating the disease in malaria endemic countries and will provide a useful alternative to the existing anti-malaria drugs for travellers.